real quick showing you how much has been done you'll know all that wiring is up and done all this is up and done and nice I've got my little holder inners in there these are all glued in and I did these and I just went to pop them in and I have this problem so I gotta think about how we're gonna solve that it may be force it may be that we pop them in when they're in there so you know three things at a time you know it is what it is I think that's very solvable though but yeah I'm very happy with where the wiring has gotten it has not been easy we've got new notes over here and up under here you know I've got that sitting where I can get at it easy enough because I've still got a little bunch of stuff to hook up to it but you'll know you don't see anything hanging down anymore this is this is coming out really slick I just pulled those guys out real quick so you can see that's how that all sits down in there we're gonna have to figure out what the process is for that I'd hope that would be easier I may be taking the console lid and filing it down just a little we'll see we'll discuss that on Saturday or Sunday welcome back to a Pontiac video this is how it always starts as soon as he sees someone pull in the driveway okay so shop dog says we're back in the shop we've got our pretzels so everybody's gonna be happy and we're just gonna kind of kind of go through and get ready okay so he just popped this in now that it's rekeyed to match that and he tried to get his brand new locks here keyed to the ignition but could not because even though they fit a 66 the ones he bought from OPGI were uh, really for a 68 so it's a different key blank so he's grabbed his originals and he's going to take them to the locksmith and have those redone right now you know we're got to figure out how I'm going to do that that'll be fun some new bumpers here nice yeah yeah just to kind of space them a little yep. and these are the locators here yep those work great nice but remember we got to have access to that I know I think I'm going to put one more of those right here right and one back here mm. because trying to close it and get these guys lined up in their oh, notches yeah, that's gonna be tough. it's a pain and these are all in too nice yeah that's all in there nice so yeah this is gonna work and this flocking turned out really nice no i'm super stoked about how well especially when it's closed you'd never even you'd know never it know. you would never know yeah. okay so We've got these stuck in and then we do have to put the tabs in from the underside so it's not as easy to remove them but they are still 100 percent removable and we put some little holders down to kind of help keep the cables guided but there so he's in playing in the fridge looking for a tin can of sprite or coke or something oh no better than sprite and coke now guinness is skinnier than a tin can okay there we go the tin can fits pretty good. The Guinness is going to wobble a little, yeah. but that's because you can't drink and drive. And let's face it, who's ever got bottles anymore? And then way back, let me have this can. Way back in the old day, that was your cup holder when you were at the drive-thru. Or the drive-in. Look at that. Mama's cup fits. Yep. Because that's what matters. She needs to stay hydrated. Perfect. Dog let us know his buddy was here. Yeah, he likes that little barker. Yeah, we finally put batteries back in the bark box. He likes that. So, using a right angle drill, I open these two back up. So, we don't know if the speakers will wind up in the door in the long run. They may go in the kick panel, but this gives the interior guy the option because now we've done all that work for him. Okay, he's been tidying, going through boxes. We're actually putting away stuff that we're not going to use. I have to plug the air ride back in. And Pixie is running patterns. Okay, uh, yeah. he's looking for some screws. If not, we can find more. But now we're going to figure out how this comes off so we can change it because he's got new ones. And you know you don't want to mess stuff up. So we think they're just a pull, but eh, let's verify that. 
Okay, those don't come off as easy as we'd hoped. And of course the new aftermarket ones don't fit. They're drilled too big. So we're gonna have to film with some epoxy. And so we're gonna get the brackets mounted back up before we do that. Because remember, aftermarket garbage is garbage. It's just the way it is. So yeah, these holes are drilled way too big for the interference fit. They just pop right on. So we'll throw some PC-11 on them, but we'll get them mounted first because this takes about a day to dry. Hey, Shop Dog was in watching movies with Jeff and Heidi, and uh, apparently the popcorn's all gone, so he's back. Come on, buddy, I got you a, a snossage thing. Hmm. Or we could be having Pringles. You never know. There, see? Got to keep your inspector happy. Ooh, that looks like fun. Okay, one of the things that we have been wanting to try and finally are wired up to be able to try is making sure everything with the air ride is hooked up correct. We don't know if my little battery guy is going to do it, but I've got my trigger wire plus, you know, we have to have the cigarette lighter for that little adjuster. We're going to give it a try. So let's see if we can power air ride with this. Okay, we are learning what it takes to connect to the air ride because we've got that module. One of the things, obviously, is we need this little controller, but he needs an app and stuff. And of course, I needed cigarette power, so that's working. And then I have a toggle switch here to act as the ignition switch. So for right now, the air ride is technically off, the car is off, but there's some setup stuff we have to do before we turn the car on. So battery's hooked up, but the car isn't on yet. Getting silly, so we're just gonna see if maybe this thing is ready to Bluetooth as soon as we turn it on. So tell me when you're ready, and I will flip the switch, and hopefully we don't get too many sparks or anything. Okay, this is thrilling TV. Okay. And that... Okay. Oh, it's doing stuff. Holy moly. Hey, those are actually pretty quiet compared to what I was expecting. Wow, that doesn't even run that long. Something's leaking. Something's leaking. Okay, that's one of the things we need to know. So, okay, we got some troubleshooting there, but more to do. Yeah, can you hook up to it now? Yeah, because I think it started running and it said, nah, it's leaking and it quit. Okay, so the right angle on this one is definitely leaking, so we're going to pick the car up, pop this tire off, which sucks. So, we've got her sitting up, and when you look inside there, maybe, well, let me see if I can get light from this side. If you look in there, there's a little L connector. See it? It leaks. <laughs> so, got a monkey with that. Okay, so we push that back in. Yeah, and we actually have quite a bit more engagement up front than we thought. Mm -hmm. So, we're not feeling as bad. Remember, in the back... It only had about a, eh, just a hair under a quarter. It was short. And here, we're actually grabbing, you know, five-eighths of an inch. So, we, we may be happy with those. The next time we have a rotor off, we will pop a stud out and measure it and get some other longer ones and, and see just how hard, difficult it's going to be. But these actually seem to, to actually have some strength. Now, this is crazy because we have no weight up front <laughs> and it's all in the back. From that little bit of being on so now we've got a wheel back on and the car's back down so let's do our little override okay and we're gonna turn her on and then she should start doing that okay and she did start doing that like I said I thought these would be a lot louder so there is that oh not sure that we have the backs jacked to the height we want, but that's okay. Without the engine in, I don't know that we can actually make that all happen anyway. What we really were curious about is how bad is all of this? 
super curious what happens if I hit one of the buttons. Does it remember anything? Well, that blinks, but it didn't do anything. Now it's got to be reset up. Okay. Oh, I'm sure that that red light means something. Yeah, we just don't want to screw anything together until we know that we don't have to take everything back apart. Okay, so we finally have that hooked up. The problem we're having is the battery is reading low because, you know, this thing is having a hard time with all that. So we got to get the laptop out of there, let that charge back up again, and then we'll try again. But yeah, we, we kind of knew that this was iffy. The important thing is now we're con connecting to it. So, okay. So now we're just being hokey, but we threw Christina's battery in real quick. And then we just have it all kind of pinched off with our ignition set up. So now we can go hook up the laptop and try to get that phone identified permanently as phone number one. And then maybe we'll set up her phone as phone number two. Okay, so we uh, realize that you really can't do all this with just batteries. It wants to see 13 volts or greater, and we're not going to do that without an alternator running. So it won't stay running for very long I'm trying to dump the tank. so we're hoping we can dump the tank down a little bit and you know we can play with this again later the important thing is we were able to talk to it the thing that makes us nervous is are we still going to have to be able to plug into that well i mean if worse comes to worse we can pop the back seat out it's not the end of the world but definitely uh not, not what we were hoping not taking that command no, no. Well, don't worry. There's always that fitting on there. Yeah. We we can bleed the tank down because we we don't really need this uh, high riser in the front look. Okay, we finally got the car bled down. We had to do it manually. We just uh, plugged the tire filler up to that. So I think until we have an alternator running, we're not going to be able to finish this. So I do feel pretty strong about being able to go ahead and mount this but we are going to need to be able to get at it uh, i think during setup so the seat will probably come back out but if i recall this seat actually pops out pretty easy a lot easier than a camaro seat so he's got that back together and after the pattern making because pixie has been gathering a bunch of patterns because they have to design how they want these to look when they're done I don't know, they're starting to see the same thing I always think. Factory stuff always looks pretty good. It's hard to beat factory. Okay, the inspector has been uh, sufficiently paid off. And he agrees that, you know, we got some stuff figured out. So, as you guys saw a little bit ago, until you have an alternator running, the uh, air ride just isn't happy. So we're going to have to deal with that later. But at least we know the wiring's all good and everything works. And we did get to test out that cigarette lighter circuit, so that was kind of nice. Pretty happy with the console, obviously. We're uh, pretty stoked with how all that came out. And uh, I just can't get over that screen. That's going to be so nice. Um, we're letting these guys cure with the epoxy because, you know, aftermarket garbage is garbage. And, uh, you know, we got those guys on. At this point, I don't know what else we can get done because they didn't have the, the door locks done yet. So until those are in, they can't do these two panels. And then I think we're pretty close to wrapping up the interior for what we're going to do for now. I mean, we're really close to that. So at this point, I guess, uh, what do we say, Diesel? Thanks for watching.